X deck came into Apex Legends Global Series Year 4 as one of the favorites to potentially dethrone TSM and Dark Zero and become only the third team to hoist a trophy. This reputation was built from multiple factors, including their previous three top five finishes on land, as well as back to back top two finishes in the best region in the world, North America's Pro League. To cap it all off, after the departure of the Fragger Sykes to rivals Dark Zero, they ended up picking up rising star Koifel, who despite having never played in Pro League before, had just finished top. 10 in kills at the ALGS Championship with Sentinels. Many, including myself, were expecting this roster along with their coach Hodzik to dominate the ALGS. Okay, my winner, I'm gonna say Xset, but at the end of Split 1, Xset was just outside looking in to the land qualification spots, failing to make it to the Split 1 playoffs land in Los Angeles. Welcome back to The Reset, where today we're gonna explore why Xset failed to live up to expectations. If you enjoy ALGS content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. It helps out more with the algorithm than you know. Also make sure to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and check out my Patreon links in the description. But first, what if I told Told you not only could you get a free legendary hero, but also a chance at winning a gaming console. Well, today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, are offering all of these prizes and more as a celebration of the arrival of Spring in Teleria with a special Spring Hunt minigame. In this event, all you have to do is look for hidden items around Mistwood. Once completed, you could win real life prizes like a gaming console or Amazon gift cards with a total value of $10,000. This is the first time that Raid is giving away such cool real life prizes simply download Raid using my link, head to the link on screen, enter your Raid ID, and start searching for the missing items. To make things even better, Raid Shadow Legends has introduced Community Weeks. Everyone can get their hands on a free legendary champion, Chronicler Adeline. To get Adeline, just log in for seven days between April 11th and July 8th. That's not all though. There's 14 days of rewards in total, including a perfect soul for Adeline. If you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? Click the link in my description or scan this QR code to get insane bonuses available via only my link. You immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion, Tariel, from the High Elves faction, and you'll get another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes an epic Rector Drath. Don't forget, the only way to get all of these things that Raid sent me is by using my custom link or QR code. Use promo code SPRINGHUNT24 to get silver and more, and make sure to join my clan, Hawkblock, and we'll be legends together. Hit the link in the description, and I'll see you on the battlefield. And so with Xset now having Koifel on the roster, we jump into preseason scrims, and they were dominating until that first match day came and everything went wrong, which leads us straight into problem number one. Season 19 was an interesting one for competitive Apex. With it, we saw the release of Conduit, a character that was a game changer in fights. Her Q ability was able to quickly take a teammate's broken shields and temporarily replace it. This completely changed contest and the pacing of fights as a whole as a crack onto the opposing team, which previously would offer the opportunity for the inflicting team to push off the damage, could be immediately rectified by the Conduit Q, replenishing the cracked player's health and putting the teams back on even footing. Because of this strength and fights, Conduit was picked at about a 50% rate across Season 19 ALGS match days, with the meta comp being Bangalore, Catalyst, and Conduit. The main popular alternative, though, was adding a Horizon into the mix in place of Conduit or Catalyst. Xset fell into the camp of favoring the Conduit pick, so on Stormpoint, they ran a comp of Bangalore, Catalyst, and Conduit. On World's Edge, they would swap out the Catalyst for Horizon. This is pretty standard, but the Stormpoint comp led to a few glaring issues. In terms of roles, Conduit was best served as your anchor. Her. That way she could use her Q on either teammate easily mid-fight from the back to ensure your frontliners can regen shields. So naturally, for Xset Fun, their typical anchor player will play Conduit. Meanwhile, their IGL Nocturnal, he's played Bangalore for years, so of course he's gonna stick on the bang. And this leaves Koifel to play Catalyst, which feels strange because Catalyst as a character is quite defensive. Her passive and Q can be used to hold the building, and her wall is great at carving out space to allow your team to breathe, which is quite the opposite of Horizon, who has a very offensive oriented abilities that enable you in fights. This matters because Koifel, being only 17 years old, has no previous pro league experience. His rise to fame came from scrim moments, leading to Sentinels picking him up for champs, which built his reputation. So his actual comp experience 
experience, although at the highest level and an absurd showing of talent, was quite limited, and immediately he's being thrown on a character who, so far in Apex, has filled a completely different role than what Koi is used to being as a frontline fragger playing Horizon. And for the record, this is not a problem unique to Koiful. Effect, who has much more experience, was having this exact same issue for European Team Alliance, as they were also running the Bang Cat Conduit comp on Stormpoint. The issue is not the skill of these players, but rather the character's skill set itself, not necessarily enabling these talented fraggers to create openings for their team. And on top of that, Catalyst is a tough character to learn effectively. Some of the best controller players in the world have struggled in the early parts of learning her. When TSM was initially trying her, they had Imperial Hal using her, and he had a terrible time and was not very happy about it. Like we already discussed Cat is like, you cannot practice Cat at all in ranked. It gains literally nothing. The only, I, we literally have to, per we have to literally struggle and just throw every tournament to slowly learn. You're we're literally not, like we already discussed, ranked gains nothing. We cannot learn Cat correctly without playing tournaments. And how many tournaments do we play? We play six games out of a day. That's like three hours of learning. If that, I'm like tired of getting frustrated over something so fucking like, I don't even, I don't even see the fucking potential of it. Then they swap Verholst onto her and jokes were flying that Verholst was a one trick because initially the fit wasn't great and previously he had been known as arguably the best Valkyrie player in the world. A lot of people have been criticizing Koifel this split saying that he's been overextending and dying a lot for it, but Verholst was having those exact same problems when he was learning Catalyst too. It did not sound like he's playing Valk. He still has the mind of a Valk player when he's playing other characters, like jumping down on a fucking bangle, thinking that he could fly back up. The issue that Verholst had, that Koifel also I think had, is the characters they previously played enabled them to push forward further than a normal character would because they had movement abilities that could get them out of those terrible spots. Those same positioning mistakes with Catalyst are not survivable. So we combine all of this from Cat being hard to learn and also not enabling Koifel to fry and it's no wonder that they seemed off on Stormpoint. Another aspect of the awkward fit is that without Koi being the Horizon, this puts way more pressure on Nocturnal to open up fights as the Bangalore, and they're far more reliant on gun skill than abilities to create those openings. Horizon just does it for free and can wreck an opposing team in so many ways. With no true entry fragger character being played, you have to be much more precise with the damage you do and capitalizing on it. And in the Conduit meta, that was one of the most difficult things to do because the moment you did damage, Conduit can wipe it out. We saw this affect some of the best fighting teams in the world, like an Oxygen or an Optic, who previously were so good at doing initial entry damage and capitalizing on it, all of a sudden the pace of fights was so different that it was bound to affect a lot of teams, including Xset. To be clear though, this is not me blaming Koifel for this. Once again, this is his first ever split of Pro League, and the best roller players in the world have had this same road bump. Exet eventually realizes this, and on match day 5, they put Koifel back on Horizon on Stormpoint, and the kill and damage output compared to his matches on Catalyst was a stark difference. It's a small sample size here of only 6 games on Catalyst to 3 on Horizon, so there are definitely other factors that can affect these numbers, I do admit that, but still, the difference is huge. Given time, I have no doubt that we'll see a player as talented as Koifel have a similar arc to that of Verholster Jen Burton, where eventually that weakness can become a strength, and we see him have incredible versatility in both roles and character pool. The character fit off rip was just awkward while the team was still building their chemistry with each other, but their issues were not solely related to the conduit pick because on World's Edge, they were very different as Koifel was rocking the horizon, and yet somehow the team was actually statistically doing worse. On World's Edge, they land at Skywest Trials. This is one of the best POIs on the map, but notably it forces the team landing here to play an edge playstyle. That's not a bad thing because you will have a loot advantage over most teams considering what's available at the POI, but rather uncharacteristically, Xset just wasn't able to play this way effectively. Over the nine games played across World's Edge on the Season 19 patch, seven of them were quite far away, meaning they were going to be one of the last teams arriving to zone. The best game across those seven further zones was only six total points. No surprise that a team does better when they have Pryo, as their only double-digit game on World's Edge comes from a Lava Fissure zone, but once again, that inability to have even one really good game despite these far zones made them much more reliant on zone RNG. In terms of gameplay reasons for why they kept dying on these far zones, it was often a combo of naturally a more clogged edge they're having to navigate, and then some 
random small mistakes compiling to their deaths. For quick examples, here's one from day three where Exit actually has a chance to win the game and have cleared out their edge successfully and have a great spot for the next zone and then die to something really silly. So, Bro, we have to live. Okay, okay, let me. I did it. I did it. I did it. Simply put, they just weren't prepared for the scenario of this happening, and it completely tanks their game. Let's check out another example from day five, where once again it's a far southern pull, and Exit just doesn't effectively hold space on their edge, allowing a team to walk up on them for free. Killing. I can't do anything yep. about it. Look, 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 east, 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 east. Yeah, I'm about to start Careful, Vs, careful, Vs. Let me, let me. Careful, Yeah. Yeah. They're walking up, they're walking up, I think. Stop, 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 They're walking up, they're walking up, bro. What? Give me knock, give me knock. Yeah, I am. I'm coming back. Come back. Wait, fine, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Go storm, go storm. Or another example from day five, where we're getting another far south zone, and Exet is more so having to react to everything around them and kind of winging it, as opposed to really having a plan for what to do. They're fighting west, they're fighting west on high ground. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. On me, on me! Yeah. 50, fucking! Watch out, watch out, watch out! I'm bangled from this. Careful, we can get mirrored from the north. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Play there, I'm anchoring, I'm anchoring, go. 150. I need to back up, I need to back up. I need to back up. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm batting, I'm batting. Find me, find me, north, find me, north, I think. Find me, north. Can you scan this? Two scans, two seconds. Okay, scanning. Yeah, yeah, here, here. Come back, come back, come back to me. We should play for ramp, we should play for ramp, I think. Okay. They're falling down, we have to fucking look at this, we have to look at this. Okay, okay. They're gonna be on bridge, we got to match this. Yeah. They're bang ulting. I'm going right. They're running, they're running. Oh, no, they're not, no, they're not. Oh, God. Chill, 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 chill. I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. You need to res me, one. Res me here. 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 Yeah. We need a balloon, boy. Yep. I don't know if we can get this off. That might be a bad one. Keen up. Keen up. They're shooting it. They're shooting it. I need to jump off. Okay. That's fucked. We have to walk in on bridge team. Yeah. No, I'm dead. I'm dead. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. I got me kill, I got me kill. Pop the left behind you. No, he just shot me on accident, brother. Simply put, it just felt like every time the zone was really far and Exet didn't have the ability to claim a god spot and sit there throughout the game, whenever they had to constantly reposition and deal with a lot more teams on a clogged edge, it just felt like as a team they were a lot more disconnected and allowed one small minor mistake to completely derail their games. And those highs and lows lead us straight into problem number two. I already showed off that Koifel's stats were impacted by the Catalyst 2 Horizon change, but in general, Exit was pretty bad in Season 19. On World's Edge through 9 games, they averaged less than 5 points a game and only had one game inside the top 5. Stormpoint was better despite those issues, uh, but still was not great as they averaged about 6.5 points a game. The, the difference between the two was just they seemed to have a much higher ceiling as they had multiple games inside the top 5 on Stormpoint, but this is where we see a problem that really stands out across their games. Exet had an extremely low floor and a pretty limited ceiling. Across the entire split, Exet has played a total of 43 games through seven total match days. The first three match days were on season 19's patch, where we already discussed they had issue with the comp, they were running, not really fitting their strengths. The first match day, they play 17th. They follow that up with a sixth and a seventh. Once season 20 drops, Exet places eighth, fifth, seventh, and 15th. Your best match day being a fifth is rough when you compare that to every other team that ends up 
qualifying for LAN. Every single squad that made it to LAN has multiple top five match days with at least one of them being inside the top three. Once again, X set only has one top five match day and it was fifth. The reason that the top three is so important is that the scoring for ALGS match days is pretty linear with the last place team getting zero points, 19th gets one, 18th gets two and so on. But once we reach the top three, it is no longer linear and there is a point increase for each spot. So that linear path takes us all the way to fourth at 16. But then at third, we jump by two points instead of one to 18. Second, we jump by three to 21. And first, we jump by four to 25. The gap between a first place and a fifth place finish is 10 whole points, the same difference between dead last and 10th place. So you can see that Exa has a much lower ceiling than any of the teams they were competing for spots against, and this is shown even further in the games they actually played. When compared to every other land qualified team, Exa has only four games they finished inside the top three, and those four games total to only 35 points. The next lowest is Cloud9, with six such games for 54 total points, while most other teams were significantly higher. But even for Cloud9, who has a similarly low ceiling despite it being two extra games for another 19 points, when they were hot, they were hot having a second place, fourth place, and fifth place finish in their match days compared to Xset's lone solo fifth place finish. So although both Xset and Cloud9 did have that somewhat limited ceiling in terms of top placements in games, Cloud9 had a much higher floor and was able to more consistently put those mediocre and top tier games together to get those three different top five match days, to where Xset was a lot more consistent mediocre. They would have a couple bad games, a couple mediocre games, then maybe one game that all of a sudden saves the day at the end to put them inside of that 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th range. And even with those finishes, they maybe could have gotten by if they didn't have the 15th and 17th different match days. The only other squads that qualify for land that have two similarly bad match days would be Oxygen and Furia, but both of them were able to offset it with a first place finish, which we already talked about is such a big difference maker. But the issue of living in that middle ground with low lows and no high highs to offset it leads us to problem number three. Xset held arguably the best POI on World's Edge, Sky West, and Trials. And with the season 20 changes, making the Edge playstyle much more rewarding, Dark Zero, the top team in North America, was looking for a change of scenery. They decided to contest Xset, which puts them in a pretty tough spot. Either stay and hold your POI, but most likely miss land because DZ has almost nothing to lose and can afford to grief your games in order to pressure you out, or leave now and try to qual from a new POI. Yeah, and test it out, and then immediately DZ's like, oh, we're we're gonna land trials. And me being the person who I am, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna sit there and fucking con DZ who's secured their land spot, are three individually great players and great team and, and like Connie, that would be fucking stupid. Xset smartly chose the latter and left Sky West after holding it for years in order to play out of Monument and Fragment. But even then, they still weren't free as Evolution decides to contest them for Monument. Now, Eevee didn't prove to be much of an issue, but it's just another aspect they're having to spend time preparing for that makes it that much harder to overcome your current mistakes and fix them in such a limited amount of time and match days you have left. Eventually, they do ward off Eevee, but then the regional finals comes around with the top 20 teams all being forced into to the same lobby regardless of groups. All the best teams are claiming their POIs, which forces the lower teams to start moving around to new POIs. This results in Optic Gaming taking Frag right next to Xset, limiting their loot pool. And then Ape Gang decides last second to leave their contest versus native at Landslide to contest Xset at Monument. What was a native gaming versus Ape, game con Ape Gang contest has actually recently been announced, and by recently I mean mere minutes ago, to now be an Xset versus Ape Gang contest at Monument. Even though this contest never actually results in fighting, it further cuts Xset's loot to be even smaller, and it chalks some of the rotates because there's just another team you have to deal with immediately off drop, and there's some sort of jockeying back and forth where it looks like Ape Gang and Xset might actually fight, and then Ape Gang's somewhat following Xset around, and it just completely ruined the regional finals day. Although I divided this up into two, three problems, you can see that Xset's inability to live to the high expectations set for this roster was so many small issues stacked on top of each other that those things only got worse as it snowballed and more and more issues get stacked on top of them, some that weren't even fully within Xset's control. And in the end, 
They will not be attending the Splitland playoffs in Los Angeles, and many are now wondering, what is next? In my opinion, they just run it back. The logic behind why Xset had high expectations was solid. This roster is incredibly talented. Nocturnal, historically, is one of the best IGLs to ever play the game. Fun is one of the most mechanically talented MK players and one of the best support players and most flexible players the game has ever seen. Hotsik is one of the best coaches of all time, and historically, they have been one of the best teams. And then you add in an elite fragger in Koifel, who, like I said, despite having some role issues this split, literally placed top 10 at ALGS champs in kills without any pro league experience. The team is talented. You get it. This split, they had a lot of small issues, some of which I don't even include in this video, that led to the end result. But their story is not over yet. Back to the drawing board, come back stronger, next split, prove that they are as good as everyone thought they could be.